Corp radio station. Listen online at KFMA.com. You want it? You got it. Reality radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios is Beef Vegan Presents. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to the show. It's BBQ Presents live from Rock 12.1 KFMA, streaming worldwide at KFMA.com on this beautiful Friday, April 19th, close enough to 420. Let's get stoned. Good morning, weirdo. Good morning. Sorry, did that come out of my mouth? All right. Uh, yeah, 420 is a big day for me, uh, personally, professionally. It's, uh, you know, my radio anniversary when I took over and started hosting a morning show with out of my living room with the goal of doing it for a living. And uh, here I am today. And... Uh, 15 years strong, got my own show, things going well, people I love are leaving me. I'm sorry, did I say that? Yeah, uh, yeah. you did. It, you know, it's a, it's what a mixed bag of nuts, if you will, and bittersweet that this year has been. It's been a year of change for me, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I don't mean to make it all about me. I want to celebrate you and your opportunities as you're moving on, but this is going to be Weirdo's last day on the show, uh, which is, you know, obviously – not ideal, but uh, obviously we, we do have a lot of people stepping up trying to, you know, I have multiple people trying to fill the role of a weirdo uh, moving forward, which mm-hmm. is good news. And, you know, uh, the crew is strong and, and everyone's doing their best uh, part to uh, fill uh, a role that honestly you created in yourself and really made uh, such a large part of the show that I know the audience going to miss you as well. But you know what I, I do cherish is you know in radio usually people leave mm-hmm. without saying anything and then there's no answer no reason no oh. nothing uh and i hate that yeah. i hate that as a listener uh, i hate that as a broadcaster so you know uh that we're not doing that the weirdo is stepping away to take a full-time position because she got an opportunity uh, that she loves and she hates me so you know, those two you. you obviously hate me weirdo you hate me. The Tucson Roadrunners hate me. <laughs> you know, like uh, this, this company hates me, man. There's a lot of hate. So yesterday, uh, let me put this back on me. Uh, <laughs> yesterday was such a roller coaster of a day because uh, it was announced uh, on various uh, numerous uh, news sites that the Tucson Roadrunners, for a fact, we're going to Tempe next season, point blank, period, going mm-hmm. into Mullet Arena. The owner said it himself on a sports radio show in the afternoon yesterday. And so, of course, Roadrunners fans and the people that I work with all start freaking out. Like, what the F, man? Yeah. This is it? Okay, well. Uh, and I was going to save my, like, a little emotional speech and, uh, and what this team – uh, organization means to me because I've been their arena host for over seven years. Yeah. You know, uh, since the inaugural season, the tail end of the inaugural season, a Shmonty brought me in. He was the first arena host and then he moved. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I became a part of that. Not only was it, it like a great uh, side hustle to make some extra money, uh, learn and fall in love with the game of hockey. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those people that I ended up working with became uh, good friends and family. Right. Uh, people I look forward to hanging out with. You know, so that aspect of, you know, being a part of an organization, heartbreaking. And imagine this, weirdo. Imagine you find out you're getting fired through ABC 15 yeah. and AZ Family and friends posting in on Facebook. I mean, that was essentially that what I dealt with yesterday. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, I don't have a job. Yeah, thanks for posting that. <laughs> you know, uh, that's that's what happened. And, of course, obviously, Roadrunner fans are furious. And the problem is is that's not necessarily the case. So uh, like about two to three hours after it was initially reported that the Tucson Roadrunners for a fact, were going to leave Tucson and go to the mold arena in Tempe. Uh, the owner of the coyotes who I relate to on so many levels. And I'll explain why in a minute, uh, you know, went on to say this to the Arizona Republic. I think I misspoke when I went on Gambo show. On the Gambo show, which actually he's he's even messing up the name of the radio show because I think it's like Gambo and Ash, something like that. There's two people on that show. Uh, so if I was the Gambo's co-host, I'd be pissed. <laughs> That's like saying, actually, yesterday, uh, 
Uh, I'll talk to you about that in a second. All right. So he's like, I think I misspoke when I went on the gamble show. Uh, I and I said that they were coming. That's not correct. I'm like, huh? Uh, Alex Morello then said, and he's the owner of the Coyotes. It was a hope that we'd work something out that we could bring them to Mullet and maybe have them play in both locations. But it's all premature. Now this is not. What? Yeah, yeah, yes, right. Uh, don't celebrate too early, right? This is kind of a way, and this is why I relate to Alex Morello, and I kind of feel his pain. One, he's a radio owner, so he does have a love for radio. I can see that. Uh, two, just like myself, weirdo, uh, there's regular F-ups, and then there's world-class F-ups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a world-class F-up, well, a regular F-up is someone who messes up, uh, every once in a while mm-hmm. and it's like a minor f up or or one major f up and then you kind of get past it a world class f up is someone who f's up and then f's up and then f's up and just and every single mistake leads to a bigger mistake and there is nothing you can do that is like going to not make it f up right yeah Alex Morello, and he's kind of my boss, and I don't want to talk bad about him because, I, like I said, I relate to this man. Mm-hmm. Every time he opens up his mouth, he ends up infuriating every single person who cares. <laughs> there is not a single win that this guy has been able to pull off verbally when talking about the matter of selling the coyotes what the future of uh, the organization is going to be anything when he goes to try to fix anything like putting a band-aid on a cut right say you got a cut on your arm you go mm-hmm. put a band-aid on it unfortunately alex morello goes to put the band-aid on it slices off his arm <laughs> that's the type of of world class that we are dealing with here Oopsie. yeah and it's so obviously mind-boggling fr- mind-boggling frustrating right right uh, I, I'm both confused, sad, angry. I'm all the emotions. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, just, just tell me something now. Right. So Can we uh, get this straight once yeah, and for all. Right. And the reason why this was just such a, a ripple effect of an F up when he was on this uh, show and he said that without thinking it through and explaining the entire situation is not only did it, were both fan bases kind of upset about this. I mean, obviously Tucson fan base furious. Uh, imagine the entire staff who didn't get any heads up that mm-hmm. this was the plan, right. right? Because I work with that staff. Now, I'm an independent contractor, so I don't expect to get that email immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everyone else there that I know are, are like full-time employees. That's basically their boss telling them like, yeah, I'm going to fire them. And and it's like, wait, wait, what? What? That wasn't what you said in the mass email last week. Right. Right. And then he's like, oh, no, no. So why is he saying uh, the hope is to split? Uh, between mullet and uh you know tucson uh and it's simple i think uh and i'm just assuming in this situation he doesn't want to break either lease uh and that way he's trying to save money on both and save face Mm, on both in an ideal world that would be fantastic unfortunately for the lease of mullet arena they specifically put the nhl team of the coyotes uh there is no work around on that he's and um, he's gonna lose money on that uh, putting the Roadrunners in that situation does not save the money that he's going to lose from Mold Arena, uh, and it's only going to increase the money he's going to lose from the TCC. Yeah. So it, it's almost like an impossible situation, and I'm really glad I'm not him right now <laughs> in this position because it's super stressful. And like I said, I am empathetic, even though a lot of these problems seem self-inflicted. Yeah. Right? Uh, and obviously, we'll we'll get to it. Uh, down the road and i posted yesterday which didn't get a great response but i uh i said look you know initially i was like it looks like you know the roadrunners are leaving right i'm i'm incredibly heartbroken about this now there's only one thing to do win the calder cup right we are uh going into our season ending weekend it's a fan appreciation weekend friday and saturday night uh because as an organization we do appreciate the fans love them they're such a part of this team uh, and we give out a bunch of stuff and we celebrate the season. Now, this season is different than previous seasons because this season, this team has been so fantastic. They're second place in the Pacific Division and they locked in home ice advantage going into the first round of the playoffs. This is huge. Yes. Uh, meaning also that not only are we going to have home playoff games, but like, let's keep this party going. If this is the last hurrah, which is still a possibility, if this is the last hurrah, Let's win every single game here on out and bring home a championship oh, so we amazing. can at least, you know, have that as a silver lining, a bow, a cherry on top, mm-hmm. something that we could covet and, uh, you know, celebrate and experience together for the very first time. 
You know, uh, that would be fantastic. And I, you know, I posted that on Facebook and I got a bunch of thumbs downs, uh, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> but that is my hope. I know that the boys uh, who play the, the road runners, I, I know they're amped about this. They, they, they are not oblivious to the fact that the community who have invested time, money, uh, emotion, uh, are, are heartbroken or potentially going to be heartbroken. So I know that they're going to step up for us as a community and it's going to be a very exciting time for Tucson Roadrunners hockey, even if it's going to be the last time. So uh, we'll, let's live every day, right? <laughs> YOLO. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's just keep the show moving. Uh, live every day like it's your last. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, like what other Karen phrase can I throw <laughs> out here? Live, laugh, love. Don't forget to live, laugh, love. You got to do that as well. <sighs> <sighs> I'm an emotional wreck, obviously, for uh, so many reasons. So my Roadrunner's leaving me, possibly. Uh, weirdo's definitely leaving me. And uh, every relationship uh, I've been ends up with, just, well, what am I doing? Uh, let's get into the music, and we got Morning Moron coming up next. <laughs> I swear we're going to have a good show. We have lots of stuff to give away, including uh, two pairs of tickets for the Legacy Tour featuring the Marley Brothers, a couple pairs of tickets for the 420 Fest, and tickets for Cat Timp on Sunday, and, of course, the Pima County Fair wristbands. I'll be giving mm. those away here in a little bit as well. Kicking things off with Foo Fighters. Be back with your morning more. And after this, it's Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. You know the name of the show. Let's go. One KFMA. I, uh, and with all the... Ex All right, we're 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 live on the podcast, getting ready here for uh, Beast Spirit Envy. And, of course, welcome back, Kimberly, uh, to the show. And thank you guys for all the comments on here. And Weirdo, of course, doing her last show. And she was already doing work for her other job <laughs> while we're still, like, 50 minutes away from ending this job. Well, okay, this is why. It's very, very exciting because... Um, I, and just to just to kind of uh, pull the curtain back a little bit, we found out that another salon was actually moving into the Tucson Mall downstairs from us. Oh, and right, like the like right underneath, like basically directly where, underneath? where the Tony and guy used to be. So of course we're curious. It's like, okay, what are they going to be offering? And right, you should probably stop talking about that right now, then, right? So yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, just, you're about to get fired uh, <laughs> from the job that you're leaving. But this it's job motivated for. us, okay. and we are doing yes. new extensions and stuff. So yes. that's what I'm talking about. And it's really exciting. Yes, but don't yeah, don't pull a new. Uh, don't pull a beef and get that microphone close to you where you, you, you know, you, you get yourself in trouble from being too honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Okay. No, 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 It's all, yeah, it's yeah. all, it's all high Exciting level stuff. stuff. Yeah, yes. it is. And, and especially with one of them being uh, the brand newest on the market, V lights, hair extensions. It literally looks like your real hair, by the time it's blended in and everything. And um, over the next couple of weeks, we should be actually the first salon in Tucson to be offering it. Oh. So yeah. So that's why. Fancy. Who's things joining are us super here? Exciting. Uh, we... This is Marty. Marty, why don't what you up, grab Marty? that microphone, he's stick it in front of your face here? Yeah, he's gonna be one of the judges today. Nice. Right. Good. Uh, Marty, yeah. which side of you work at the barbershop or the salon part of Rustics? All of it. Oh, you're all yeah, over the place. Look at that. There's not a <laughs> utility guy. Nice. Yeah, he, he, he's been manning the receptionist side of the barbershop for the last couple of days while Tim is working really hard to get the, uh, uh, what is it called? Marlin's Marlin's, Marlin's yep. Lab. Marlin's yeah. Lab nice. launch. Nice. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, uh, tell me more, Kimberly, about Marlin's Lab, because this is, you know, we talked with Tim before when he ca uh, came in. What's cool about Rustic's Barbershop is it also is kind of like, you know, these hair care lines that you guys are creating. Mm -hmm. And you could see the, it actually being made at the Tucson Mall, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Uh, so this Marlin's line, what is this? So basically, he's producing his own beard butter, beard oil, shave creams. Uh, we've got some cologne what? that he brought in today. So you can smell nice it. It looks like gladiator. bear mace. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to bear mace me. You see the I way know, these right? guys have right. their beards, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Oh, okay, you want yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gonna, let me give a smell here in a second. We're going to get on the air. Because uh, right now we're on the stream, so this is a podcast broadcast. Uh, and then we're going to get on the air, kind of recap that, uh, obviously plug away, and then get ready for our Beard Envy competition. And, uh, you know, of course, we got uh, OG Streamer Manny is in the mix. Uh, Taco's in the mix. Phil's in the mix. We had Ron, who was going to be a contestant as well. He was a last minute. I canceled, and that's why we have three contestants, and you know we advertise it as three contestants. I always get at least four, right? Um, we had a lot of people submit to be contestants this round, which was fantastic. Is and uh, it was difficult to choose uh, because a lot of hairy people up in Phoenix. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Phoenix. I was thinking about the Coyotes, Tucson. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, hockey's on my mind too. 
as I'm wearing a jersey. Right on. Mm-hmm. Rock one, 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Getting ready for Beef's Beard Envy Round 3, brought to you by Rustic's uh, uh, Barbershop inside the Tucson Mall. And, of course, Rustic's is connected to a salon called... Speakeasy Salon. And yes. Spa. And uh, owner of Speakeasy uh, Salon is Kimberly. Welcome back, Kimberly. Thank you. Uh, yes, and we're talking all things that's happening uh, with the uh, barbershop, the salon, and the hair care line that they have. And you were talking to me about the the Marlins line that you, um, what was it called again? So it's Marlins Lab. Yeah, Marlins and Lab. We, yep, we and produce our own beard butters, shave cream, beard oil. Uh, we've got a cologne here that smells. Yeah, and say uh, this is Alex, right? You say Alex. No, Marty. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, so close. I was so close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Marty, uh, Marty, you work at both uh, the salon and the barber shop, and this is a beard cologne that you brought in that you guys make. So, like, Correct. that's it's, what sets Rustics apart from everyone else is they actually create their their hair care lines right there in house and. Uh, this does come in a bottle that does look like bear mace. So, uh, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, and yeah. Basically, what we're going to do is go into other uh, barber shops and sell to the barbers. So, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Marty, explain to me this uh, this beard cologne uh, and how you would sell <laughs> the, it and what it smells is, like. Uh, this is a oil oh, cologne. So, the it's uh, it's called Gladiator. It's probably one of our our more popular fragrances, uh, and. Uh, uh, Basically, it's more of an aftershave. But okay. It's got a real nice fine mist, so when it's applied, it's 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 really nice. And I have to say, the other day, Tim goes, "You got to check this stuff out," you know. So I did. Left the left the shop, left the barber shop, and you know, got home, in my truck, sprayed some on. My wife was walking out the gate. She's, "What do you have on?" <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's like, great. Let's go inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. So, really good. Yeah. so uh, and, ladies. Um, we do have another one that is just pheromone. Really? Yeah. I was, about, I was yes. about to ask you. I'm yeah. like, are you like putting pheromones in this and <laughs> making it <laughs> like one. love yeah. potion mm-hmm. number nine? Yeah. The, really, the cool thing is uh, they're they're all made in house. They're manufactured in house uh, and with a lot of care. Yeah, I, I've, I've put together some beard butter. You know, made some beard butter and some other products, and it, it's quite a process. You know, and. Um, uh, but all the natural products that uh, Tim's chosen and, and more of an organic type of a, of a, of a, of a, of a product line. Right. Yeah. So, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten compliments of wearing the beard butter for, from rustics and, you know, uh, and, and dating and just be like, oh, why you smell so good? I'm like, yeah. yeah right, because like, it, 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 it smells fantastic, but it's also not overpowering exactly. either, which yes. is like that balance that you have to find. And the fact that, yes, Tim, especially my crunchy hippie ass is like i want all natural organic because no. again mm-hmm. when you're putting this stuff on your beard or your hair or anything like that you want it to be kind of as light as possible and healthy as possible and the fact he's worked on this now what six months i mean he's been working uh, on it oh, a very Marlins long time I, yeah yeah but as far as doing his beard butter and stuff he's been doing about seven years yeah I mean, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah he's a mad scientist yeah. when it comes yep. to that and mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple comments here on the podcast broadcast stream taco already said that uh the butter is legit he's got some on now which is good news for you yeah. weirdo when they start rubbing their beards <laughs> all in your face it's gonna be fantastic <laughs> yeah. but I hate uh, this part. dale was asking about uh, you know do you serve boo- booze inside the speakeasy and and yeah actually the barbershop salon inside the tucson mm-hmm. mall does serve alcohol for those 21 and up that yes. kind of get add to the experience because yes. you know when you groom and you self-care like that you know you could do it the the super cheap way where it's just kind of like you sit in a in a lobby it smells like alcohol and you're, you're reading old <laughs> magazines right Crazy. or you got the comfort of a setup like rustics and uh, the salon here because it is a very comfortable kind of you know a salon experience on both sides yes Right. Uh, that you can watch, you know, great games, TVs, have a cold uh, beverage mm-hmm. while you get your hair cut, your hair did, your nails done, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah, both and, sides. And plus we Lashes. have the memberships as well, right? Yeah. Like so on the barbershop side for 149 a month, not only do you get the kind of discounted service and products, but you also get your own beer mug that's up on the wall. And so when you come in for that service, that first drink you get is free nice. with that membership as well. And we've got something Marty, a little similar on the salon side as well with the wine. Right. And if you're thinking to yourself, man, weirdos, so she's selling this so well, it's because she's going to be working there now. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she's, she stopped oh, representing no. the radio station. She's fully <laughs> representing her uh, full-time employers. Yeah, mm-hmm. So definitely come see her, guys. Yes. Yeah. Now, how much does a bottle like this run, Marty? Because this is a giant-ass bottle, 16 that's, ounces. I think that's a 20 I think that's $22. I have to double 22. check. 
it's 22 uh, yeah dude and, and, just, uh, and you just spray it in your face yeah, like this just, like you know after after you shave you just uh you know close your eyes and give it give it a nice a mist. mist oh mist here mm -hmm. you, right. you, here's the here's my biggest Drum way roll. of putting in fragrance right. is you spray it in front of you like kind of in front of you and, and then you in. walk through it oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. that's what you got to okay. do yeah, yeah you don't directly I like just, shoot yourself in the I, eye with I, it. on the other okay. hand i just squirt that stuff on me that's why my wife was like let's go let's go right right well i mean after your endorsement and stuff after i leave here yeah it's gonna be our new tagline you want to get laid put this on well actually we're working on something called the shirt lifter yeah and um it's gonna be very similar to it does smell good i'm sorry i just mace myself that's really good uh oh nice uh i love it already uh then this is called the the gladiator yeah 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 smell it all the way over here did it add to your performance there marty it is did you act like a, a gladiator? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. It, does, it does beef you up a bit. Are you not entertained? <laughs> All right, so, of course, the Rustics Barbershop is the sponsor for Be Spirit MB. So that means whoever has the best beard out of our three contestants is going to win a prize pack courtesy of them. We're going to meet our three contestants next. And then we have a couple different rounds that we're going to go through them. Of course, we have the experts here uh, from uh, Rustics. Uh, they're going to judge the beard on it actually being a quality beard. They're looking for split ends. They're looking for, you know, everything that a hair care professional would look out for to know if it's healthy facial hair and grooming technique. On top of that, we're going to play beard ball. We're going to see how many balls we can get in our beard. That's going to be fantastic. So excited to throw my balls around. Yeah, yeah. And then also, um, we're, we're going to be rubbing. Uh, we're going to do a blind a smell test, which they're all going to smell fantastic. And that's good news for you, weirdo. Mm -hmm. uh, but also a field test on weirdo's face. So they're going to get super close and, and rub uh, their beards all against weirdo's face. And and based off of feel, texture, and eroticism, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to see which one has the best beard there then go to the final round and see who has the best beard in tucson so you can watch our fun as we continue the podcast broadcast live on youtube.com slash beefegan or our facebook page or just keep it right here because we'll be back after music from the smashing pumpkins on rock one 2.1 clear all right there you go nice cool and all right, so we're going to get ready for uh beard ball and everything else uh while we're getting ready for the reset uh, earlier this morning, we did a morning moron brought to you by meth. And in case you missed it, one little something like this. I forgot to mention today is also a big day because we're going to have another round of beef spirit envy in a nine o'clock hour with our friends, Rustics Barbershop and uh, the salon. What's the name of the salon? Uh, Speakeasy Salon. The Speakeasy Salon, which is connected to each other inside the Tucson Mall. We have our contestants lined up uh, and they're going to be joining us in the podcast broadcast. We'll do fun and games to see who has the most glorious beard in all of Tucson. And winner will receive a prize courtesy of Rustics Barbershop. And so all that's going to be happening in the podcast broadcast. Remind yourself to join us YouTube.com slash be vegan. But first, it's a 617 and time for your morning moron. Let's do it. I know we've been in a situation like this before. We've seen a head like the a headline like this before. Some people are slow learners and they make this mistake time and time again. All right. Rule number one, if you're going to be a drug addict, okay, mm -hmm. is never call the police to complain about the quality of drugs <laughs> you just received. Or if it just got stolen or any of that, so you know, many things. Stop calling the cops on yourself. There's an unwritten agreement that you uh, pretty much uh, like signed uh, when you decided to choose that lifestyle. And that's like that's a criminal lifestyle. So essentially, uh, criminals be criminaling. <laughs> I'm just making up things today. Uh, but uh, basically, if you're breaking the law, you can't use the law to protect you from getting the law broken against you. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Thank you. All right, I'm going to show you a quick mugshot you'll see in the podcast broadcast. This is a woman who surprisingly uh, enjoys meth. I say surprisingly because, yeah, you know, she's not uh, as fit as you would assume, right? She's not 92 pounds. No, 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 no. There's an add of one in front of that, and that's where we're at. It's <laughs> just fine. Uh, meth is not necessarily stereotypically associated with weight gain. Uh, but anyways, uh, in Indiana, 34-year-old Sarah Harris found out the hard way that calling cops when the meth you just purchased proved to be inferior isn't the best idea, allegedly, of course. So a probable cause affidavit says Harris called 911 twice 
which prompted an officer to visit a residence because the first time they weren't going to do it. Right. right? They're like, you idiot. Yeah. So the officer came by for a wellness check because essentially she's calling and saying, hey, the meth I got isn't that good. Can you help me out? And they're like, uh, no. no. And since it's Indiana and there's a lot of you tweakers out there, we don't have time for this. Hang up. And then call back. No, but it's really bad. Like, you know, I'm like barely even gacked. You know, okay. Well, you know what? We're going to see how mental you are. We'll send right. someone by. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. So the Harris allegedly said the mess she purchased wasn't what it was supposed to be. Not that it wasn't meth. It just wasn't like was probably not great? glass or maybe it was too strong because it said that it left her feeling as if she was going to have a heart attack. Uh, also, warning kids, that's a side effect of meth. Uh, yeah. You know, you can rev up your heart to like 3,000 miles per hour. It's not going to feel great. Yeah. Anyways, Harris also allegedly requested that the meth be tested and will and was willing to turn in the person who sold it to her. Can I borrow your guys' lab real quick? Yeah, yeah. Or just test it out. Let me know what the quality is. Is Walter White working for you? I, I think he'd be good at testing this out as yeah. far as the quality. Yeah. yeah. And of course, I'm a tweaker, so I have no problem snitching. Here's another lesson to take away from this. You go down to you, that like path. Uh, don't think that uh, your clientele or your circle is going to protect you. you know, right. Tweakers have no honor. No. They can't shut up. In fact, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, you know, after she said all those things, uh, you know, police, they come by, did in fact confirm that she was in possession of methamphetamine. And now she's facing a class fix, uh, class six felony charge, which could end up with her serving 30 months. Mm. Jesus. I know. You know, I'm noticing a lot of these morning Warrens are coming out of Indiana. Like is Indiana trying to compete with Florida at this point? Yeah, yeah, I, I would assume so. Like yeah. middle America, you know, a lot of dummies there. So mm -hmm. uh, it's ripe. You know, they have uh, farmland, you know, yeah. that's a bunch. And uh, we had a morning moron yesterday, Indiana reporter. Mm -hmm. He was a morning moron because he <laughs> did the little heart sign to Caitlin Clark and then was like, do that to me. And uh, pretty much got himself fired. So Ooh. that's a side note for all the reasons Sarah Harris, uh, you know, bought meth. Didn't like the quality of meth because it was possibly too good. Called the cops several times uh, to get it tested. They tested it, found out that she was in possession of a felony, and all those reasons and more. Sarah Harris is today's morning moron. I do like making fun of tweakers. It's a, it's a, it's a fun part of the job, you know. Uh, joining us on the stream, as you could tell, three fantastic individuals, all right? Uh, OG streamer number one, Manny, uh, in the building. We got Phil right there in the middle going up against a very well-groomed taco. It's like, Taco, <laughs> is this your wedding day or something? Are you going from here to straight to, you know, say your nuptials? I mean, this is, I we've seen Taco several times. Mm -hmm. And in all fairness, sometimes Taco comes in like he's just worked a shift. Yeah. Right? Because I uh, usually do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got a nice fresh haircut to go with the beard. Look at that. Oh, oh I came to win. He came to win, dude. All right. Now, Manny. And now, the of course, Manny's, the storyline with uh, Manny is that he's always the bridesmaid. Two times in a row, he came in second place. Uh, then when you saw Taco, did you immediately think, ah, oh, fuck. I almost left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't because, you know, Ron bailed out. Now, Phil, getting close to the mic, this is your first time, so let's uh, pop your radio cherry, dude. Uh, <laughs> and you're friends with Anthony as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, let me ask you about your beard. Obviously, it's a fantastic beard. It's been uh, growing out. How long have you grown this beard out? Uh, five years this August. Five years this August. And he... Oh, I had a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and why do you have a birthday for your beard? <laughs> well, that's that's as far as I remember when I started growing it. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, mean, yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Now, uh, do you trim it up or you try to get it as long as possible? I guess try to get as long as possible. When I've, I've done some visits to the barber shop where they would just snip around just to make it more well shaped. I mean, I guess I'm just going for the, how, how much, how much longer I can grow it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, you know, and then have you ever, I mean, obviously when uh, like my beard gets long, I play with it all the time. Right. I know you guys do too. Right. Uh, so one of the competitions that we're going to do uh, is a beard shadow puppet. Okay. So <laughs> I want you to think uh, like what you can craft as, as far as a shadow puppet. And then we're going to have weirdo get her flashlight on her camera and uh, you know, put it behind and see if we could create uh, some sort of image with a beard shadow puppet. That's going to be one of the competitions. So playing with your beard is definitely a benefit here. Uh, also, we have a game that we're uh, proud to play with you guys called Beard Ball. 
All right. Now, beard ball. Uh, I actually played with weirdo. I put my balls in her face. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Hit me in the eye. <laughs> I hit her in the eye, too. That was, you mm -hmm. know, it, it happens. Now, we do have safety goggles, so we won't poke an eye out. And we don't need to use the Velcro beard that I put on her face uh, just to make it seem nice and um, not hetero when I played it with her. But, uh, you know, like we could just throw these balls in your beard and if they stick and we're going to play, see the points on that, that's going to be around. And then the blind uh, feel test is essentially you guys are going to take your beard. Right, and you're gonna smother Weirdo's face in it, right? Just My I'm talking. Part. This is this is her last day full Great. time and stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a little heartbroken, right? Uh, I think the only thing that's gonna help me heal fast and move forward is to see you guys just get like and engulf her face in beard and and, <laughs> and really just have her live inside you. Uh, is the oh, idea? God. And then based off that, based off that, then she's gonna give a blind. Uh, basically <laughs> review and those are going to be three rounds and then the final round uh, is going to be as legit as possible it's when the professionals are going to really look at your beard uh, they're going to look for split ends they're going to look for lining they're going to smell they're going to feel uh, just based off the health of your beard and then based off the, what they determine we will have a winner and uh, the winner will receive the prize so i'm excited about it you guys excited about it oh, now, sure. phil are you nervous i can tell you a little nervous yeah, i mean just being in here, I just don't know what to think right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nervous we're, we're, excitement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the crew. This is the broom closet. You know, we like to have fun here. And that's that's part of it. So you want to see. Now, Weirdo, I'm going to allow you. Yes. Yes. To throw the balls at the face. Okay. Okay. Um. So. And, of course, I want it on screen. Mm -hmm. And we got safety goggles for those who are playing. So we're going to get right into that. Okay. Next. Now, I know it's radio, and uh, the, the audio aspect of that probably won't be fantastic. It would be great to to hear any kind of balls slapping against face, though. Uh, here we go. We can Rock 1, 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to Be Vegan Presents. This is not all just to make Weirdo feel uncomfortable. Part of it's going to be for fun, for Weirdo for fun, because I know that in her new job, she's not going to be able to put balls in people's beards. Uh, but that's what she could do at her old job, because we're going to do Be Spirit Envy competition as we have our three contestants who we just met on the podcast broadcast stream. OG streamer number one, Manny is back, uh, Taco's back, and Phil. Uh, so the three of them are competing for best beard in Tucson with the winner going to receive a prize from Rustic's Barbershop inside the Tucson Mall. You got to check out that barbershop too. Super bougie, but comfortable and not bougie as far as uh, out of control Scottsdale expensive. But right. I'm just saying it's it's nice. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do real quick while I have a weirdo here is she's going to throw her balls at uh at our contestant's face. Now we have a game called Beard Ball. Beard Ball is a very fun game that you could play at home as well. Actually, I was gifted this, but you could buy Beard Ball on Amazon. Uh, these balls have a Velcro around them, and Weirdo's gonna throw the beards, or sorry, the balls at your beards and try to stick as many balls as she can in your beard. All right. Now she has five opportunities to get the balls in there, and then we're gonna add up those points, and it's going to end up and you know contributing to the final score okay so here okay. take these weirdo and of course we're going to want to see this on the screen so i think uh, having them stand up against the wall not completely against the ball but manny stand sideways here stand facing weirdo stop all right now back up perfect yeah see now all right a little bit more just so i could see you on the screen and we could see weirdo now you got five shots here uh, one more step back. One more. There we go. Perfect. All right. Here we go. Here's our first. How many balls can Weirdo get in Manny's beards? Let's go. That's one. See, they stick really good with a fantastic beard. Uh, that's, a, that's a miss. Oh, you got to really get it going there. So hard. Uh, oh, right in the mouth. And here we go. Fifth and fight. Oh, that was it. All right, so one point for Manny. Only one point for Manny. Let's get Phil up there. Now, Phil has a fantastic beard. It's turning five years old in August, so he has a birthday He's going to go to kindergarten. A beard birthday, if you will, <laughs> uh, which is awesome. All right, hold on. Now, go. All right, that's straight in the chest. Now, of course, weirdo, if you suck at throwing, that's going to be detrimental to them. So 
How about try, try not throwing so hard? I, you try to knock these guys out. How about a little <laughs> a loft in there so it's it catches? Okay. Oh, oh almost <laughs> had one. Unfortunately, Phil has a score of zero. Uh, Phil has score of zero. All right. Got the five balls again. Taco. A well-groomed taco, in fact, actually is a different man. Uh, take another half step back there, Taco. All right. Now, this is a wide beard. It's a long beard. So it definitely gives you a large target. Uh, so you got five balls you could attempt to put in Taco's beard. Let's go. There's one. Up, oh, got the nipple. Up, oh, that one bounced right off. Up, oh, and there's, maybe there's too much beard butter on it. All right, well, Taco got a point. All right, so there we go. Uh, and not one time did you hit them in the eye, so that's good. So that was the round of beard ball. And okay, so so Taco and Manny tied with one each. Yes. Okay. To keep it going here, go to the second microphone here, Weirdo. Okay. All right. Uh, now, guys, I'm gonna point to you, and Weirdo's gonna close her eyes. Take your glasses off, Weirdo. Okay, now with this, and I want you to describe, I, I want you to describe, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, what you're smelling, what you're feeling. You got to verbalize this. Yes. Now, this is very important, guys, when I point to you. I want you to go up into Weirdo's face uh, with your beard and beard only and really get in there. Like, I don't want her nose to touch your real chin, not your beard <laughs> chin, right? Uh, and really just get all up in there as Weirdo attempts to, uh, A, not laugh or being ticklish, <laughs> Uh, and then B, describe the sensation of the mantasm or the mantastic uh, hair that you're rubbing against their, her face. I'm trying to describe this in a PG way. I'm almost getting pornorific. <laughs> All right. So uh, you got your eyes closed? Shut? I do. Okay. I do. Here we go. Um, go ahead and step right up. Yep. If I point to you, you're, you're going. All right. First contestant, wow. get up in there good too. Don't be afraid to uh, like, you know, physically violate her face yeah <laughs> okay so what are you what are you feeling there weirdo smells what's... smells pretty good okay what's the smell like mm, it smells like it's got some kind of uh butter or oil on it and then oh, there's uh, butter definitely butter mm, do you smoke yeah yeah okay sorry <laughs> no no no, stop, no no talking because yeah that, that will out stuff but yeah get real in there get real in there get, get, get so close oh. I, oh i shouldn't have opened my mouth <laughs> yeah. all right go ahead and step all back right. Then. all right all right so um let's see next contestant right up and get in there real good okay almost looks like he's making out with her from this angle that's nice no mm, snoring it smells very good okay okay Get up good. Like, I want her to feel the skin on your real face underneath your beard. So get super <laughs> in there. Hey, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. But you got to get that bottom of there on, like, the top of her nose, her eyeballs. See what it feels like on her eyeballs. Mm. There you go. Yeah, and around her mouth. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. All right. And then see, uh, final contestant, get in there good. I want your beard <laughs> to make her face pregnant. That's how close we're getting. Mm, also smells very good. Oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, well, okay. So what do you feel in there, weirdo? What's it feel like? Uh, don't push your face away. Yeah, Come on. Just, I, could, I don't want it in my mouth. No, God. it's fine. Well, oh, yeah. What do you, what's it feel like? Uh, Keep so. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, don't, don't put it by her mouth while she describes mm. it. Yeah, so very, very soft. Oh, it's soft. Yeah. Smells good. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Feels like I could I could run my hands through it very nicely. Okay. In fact, actually, you know, uh, all three will do one at a time. You can grab it, but keep your eyes closed. Okay. All right. So first one, go ahead, grab it. Mm. All right. Nice. I kind of want to braid it. All right. Well, don't. Back, okay. Uh, back up, contestant. <laughs> Next person. Grab it. Squeeze it. Feel it. Ooh. Tug it if you want. It's real. <laughs> all right. And on it's to good. the next. Fantastic. Very nice. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, okay, you can open your eyes now. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Your pores are pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, or three. One, mm. two, or three. You got to go with two. You're going to have to go with two. Yes. Okay. You're going to go with two. If you were to guess who number two was, who would you think it is? I think Taco. 
You would be correct. Uh, Another point okay. for Taco. Excellent job. See, you know, taking a shower actually is paying off so far in the competition. <laughs> yeah. I have a monthly shower. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it timed up nicely. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so far, uh, the score, and, and it still is anyone's game. Uh, Taco's in the lead with two points. Manny has one point. Phil has zero points. But again, uh, really, when it comes down to uh, how the barbers are going to judge this, is really going to be able to tell the difference. So we have more. Beef Vegan presents Beard Envy coming up on the podcast broadcast. You can join us, youtube.com slash Beef Vegan. Our uh, expert judges are going to be joining us next. And then we will reveal who has the best beard in Tucson before the end of the show. So stick around. It's Rock 1 2.1. And clear. Excellent job, guys. Yay. All right. So uh, we're going to switch you guys out and get Kimberly and our, um, you know, barbers back in. And I'm going to play weird news from earlier this morning. And we'll continue our Beard MV competition right after this. So stick around. 2.1 KF man, welcome back to Be Vegan Presents. It is now 6.50 and time to get weird with Weirdo. Oh, oh yeah. I, I don't know why I said it's so weird. Gosh. <laughs> why don't you just uh, bump up my rating to 2.5? <laughs> okay. okay. All right. uh, give me some weird news, Weirdo. Well, we've got another weekend at Bernie's situation. Another one? Another like this one. happens all the time? I feel like this happens at least every couple months that somebody tries using... Somebody who's dead to get away with some shenanigans. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. This video went viral a couple mm -hmm. days ago, and it was disturbing. And yes. just, like, absolutely baffling. Like, what in, how in the world do you think this is going to work? Like, yeah, especially when she used a taxi to transport this body as well. And was like, I need you to help me lift out the body. Yeah. Okay, like, so yeah, give a give a breakdown because no, I don't know the whole backstory. So okay. this happened in Brazil, yes, and uh, there was a woman who uh, had her dead uncle come with her into mm -hmm. the bank. Yes, okay. so yes, this woman's name is Erica, and so she got it. She got her uncle's body. He had just got got done getting like treatments at a hospital too. Like so, this man was very very ill. Yeah, and so she gets in the taxi, gets him in the wheelchair, and then wheels him into the bank to get a loan for a whole whopping total of thirty four hundred dollars. Oh yeah, she's trying to get that payday. Yeah, mm. but when you're watching the video, like this man is clearly deceased. Yeah, and so and she when when she was being arrested and being questioned by cops, she's like, "Oh, it, it must have happened when we were in line. That's when he died." Yeah, no, no, not even close because you can clearly see. Huh. You saw the unblurred version? I did. Oh, no. Yeah, literally, this dude looks like Tales from the Crypt. Oh, no. Yeah. See, I didn't see the unblurred version, mm -hmm. and nor did I look for it, because I don't want that image in my head. That's going, at least you're leaving the show traumatized. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is brutal. But I did see her attempt to put a pen in his hand, mm -hmm. and is like, no, no, he'll sign. Here you go. Yeah. And, and he, then just, the, he just needs a little assistance before the rigor sets in. <laughs> yeah, dude. And, and then the bank teller is like, uh, I don't think he's okay. Oh, no, no, he'll be fine. Uh, no, he looks really bad. Yeah, like, I think we need to call the authorities. Yeah, and they did. And you know you know it's bad when it's not only is the bank tellers uh, like blatantly filming you with their cell phones mm -hmm. while you're attempting to do this, but if you notice in the background of that video, every single person in the lobby in the waiting room was looking over there being like, Correct. what in the hell? Everybody knew that was a dead dude. Mm -hmm. Everybody. You could see it from across the room. Imagine you're sitting at the bank, right? And you're waiting to get loan or whatever the case, and this happens, you're seeing this. Yeah. You're like, Man, this is a terrible day. Yeah, I mean, his skin was gray. Yeah, it was, it was uh, not good. But yeah, uh, so now she is facing a th a theft through fraud, embezzlement, and abuse of a corpse charges. Yeah, absolutely. She deserves all those charges. Mm -hmm. All right, what else happened in weird news? All right, so, you know, we've talked a little bit about, like, the petty revenge we get on exes and everything. And yeah. a woman on TikTok has gone viral because I really do think that she's had the ultimate revenge on her ex. What's that? So this woman uh, found out that her ex was cheating. He was kind of talking to women online and in person. And he's, she's like, that's it. We're done. And they found out to break their lease. It was going to be like 10 grand. Oh. So they're like, you know what? We we have a child together. Let's just get through this, through the, through the summer. And instead, she was like, okay, I'm heartbroken. This sucks. What can I do with it? Somebody bought her a karaoke machine for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, and no. so she sang hits like Carrie Underwood's, uh, you know, before he cheats, before he cheats, That's a classic, and uh, uh, Beyonce's song Irreplaceable. And here's the kicker: she does it at random times, yes. like to wake him up in the morning. And she's just fully committed to doing this in the last month that they are living together, to the point that she's now had people contact her on TikTok 
to do the same thing to their exes through voicemail, and she has made money. Oh, wow. That's funny. She, she turns it into a side hustle. Exactly. Uh, it's relatable for anyone who's been through uh, breakups and heard mm-hmm. their exes sing like Taylor Swift at the top of their lungs exactly. and off key. Uh, so I see that. And uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, progress to anything domestic <laughs> as far as disputes because you're driving a person mad. And that's and it, was this in Florida? Uh, it's, yes, yeah. it's in Florida. But actually, he has a great sense of humor of it because he has taken accountability. He's like, I know I've hurt her and anything she does, I totally deserve. And if this is it, Sure, it's annoying, but it is also kind of funny. Uh, yeah, he's like, it's hilarious. Uh, excuse me while I go bang your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess he's like, we're even. <laughs> All yeah. right, well, that is a great weird news. Let's hit the reset. Uh, we have your final lights coming up next. We still have tickets giveaway for the Pima County Fair, including wristbands and more. So keep it right here. It's Rock 12.1 KFMA. All right, we are back here on uh, live on the podcast broadcast. Uh, welcome back to the show. Got a bunch of comments I wanted to see here uh, real quick. So uh, please welcome Julio. Julio is joining us, right? Yeah, from Rustic's Barbershop. Uh, Julio is uh, a barber. And, and there's a there's a way, there's a hair care professional or what, what's so what's a fancy way to describe I me? Mean, obviously, you're a barber, been a barber in the game, but what's the fanciest way you could describe your position? Barber PhD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Barber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lisa wants to see me stroke the beards too, but you're gonna have to pay extra for that. That's gonna be on my OnlyFans later. Uh, yeah. uh, Julio, how long have you been a barber at Rustics? Uh, about a year now. Nice, yeah. All right? And you do a lot of beard maintenance. I mean, you have a beard, but you have a lot of customers that come in and and you line them up and, and try to make them look good too. Yes, 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 I do. Yeah. So, uh, what are some of the things that you uh, look for in a good beard? Um, I like somebody who you know takes care of the beard. Yeah, Use beard butter, oils, you know, combs their beard. It's not all nappy, you know. Yeah, don't look like dreads or something. <laughs> hey, hey, have you ever had a customer come in where they just they they let their beard go and a you're like of, a lot of them, a majority really? of them, yeah, they don't really take care of their beard. Ah, yeah, see, these I'm, gentlemen look like they do. Though. Yeah. They do. Oh, yeah. is he combing his? Yeah, <laughs> so they do. Uh, you know, um, they knew what the game was, so they had to step it up. So it's not like we like surprise them at their house. Like you're gonna be in the beard, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they sleep combing their beard. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a beard net that you guys wear? <laughs> yeah, anything like that? Yeah. All right, now real quick. Over, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to try this, and this is probably gonna fail miserably, but we're gonna find out. Uh, you know, a weirdo bust out your flashlight. Okay. Uh, I want to see if you could do a beard shadow puppet. Now, you guys, do you guys think about what you might be able to do as far as a beard thing? And and I want you to do the flashlight uh, against that banner there, okay. uh, weirdo. Stand in front. Yeah, so let's start off with Manny. Manny, you start up front. He's going to do the flashlight. We're going to see what kind of... Uh, you, what you can come up with. Again, this could be a super fail, but we'll find out. Oh, well, there we go. There's something. Hey, in America. Yeah, Don King. <laughs> oh, it's Don King. Okay, okay. excellent, excellent. Okay. All right, Phil, the, well, that was Manny's Don King. Phil, let's see what you got. There we go. Yeah, get in there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's an I don't know. It's like a crab claw. Yeah, I can't see it. That's okay. All right, nice, <laughs> nice try, Phil. Taco, how'd you do? Let's see what you got. I'm glad I'm not, I'm not doing this part on the radio, but. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, hey, Manny, kill the lights. Okay, yeah, what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right, turn the lights back on. It's getting weird in here. I don't like being in a dark room with so many bearded men. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, Kim, uh, and his bonus points for you guys. Kim's going to throw a ball at each of your beards, all right? And if it sticks, you'll get a bonus point, okay? Uh, and so Don't, like, wail it at them. Be, be soft and gentle with your balls, care. Kim. Safety yeah, safety glass. Uh, Okay, here we go. Let's see. That's one point for Manny. A no for Phil. Oh. All right, Manny's got an extra point. It's Rock One Two Point One KFMA. We're playing beard ball here uh, with our contestants, and so far, I right, here it's a close competition between two. Uh, it's a taco 
and Manny. They're tied up with two points apiece in the bonus round. No one really got around for the Shadow Puppets. That was a bust, uh, but that was fun. We're joined by Julio, who's a barber at Rustics.com. If you want to book with these bar- barbers individually, you could do so by making your appointment at Rustics.com. That's R-U-S-T-I-K-S. Uh, and Rustics uh, Barbershop and, of course, the beauty salon, the speakeasy uh, beauty salon that's connected to Rustics. It's right there mm-hmm. inside the Tucson Mall. It's an excellent place for you to not only get groomed, uh, but have a alcoholic beverage or two in the process while you're doing your shopping. So it's all in one right there. And on top of that, they got tons of different customized beauty lines uh, for both men and women that they create uh, in, in-house. in And I have this a beard cologne. Uh, that looks like a bear mace container. So it's it's almost like it should be like a lifetime supply of beard clone, honestly. I mean, yeah. if it's like a mist, uh, how long do you think this thing's going to last? Uh, Marty, how long do you think this thing will last? I, I think that, that should last, I, I would think, a couple months at least. Of course, depending on how much you use. Right. But uh, you know, if uh, it depends on how your girlfriend or your wife reacts to it. You know, you mm-hmm. might be using the whole bottle in one night. <laughs> I'll say this, though. I mean, if you go through this in a month, you're trying too hard, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's just it's just too much right because it seems like a couple yeah, whiffs right. and and you're good and marty was even saying that he came home after trying this on and his wife fell for it tricked her he's like yeah so she was all over it and it does really smell good so coming up with those customized fantastic scents is also a specialty of rustics so so much more than a barber shop uh, so check them out at rustics Dot com. Now, you guys are going to be our three judges, okay? Uh, and before we go to break and then come back and reveal who the winner is going to be, what are you looking for when you evaluate these three gentlemen's beards? I'll start with you, Julio. Uh, well, well, I look for the fullness. You look for fullness? Yeah, the fullness. And speak into the mic there. Uh, what's your name? Like Nick. Nick, yeah, like uh, Nick right here. Nick. Nick's beard is pretty full, man. He, he has a lot of of uh it's real dance that's taco yeah marty what are you looking for in this too um i like the same uh, the fullness uh clean of course uh not uh scraggly and you know combed out and you know nice uh nice looking and uh, uh just uh, a good good overall look you know uh yeah. not not uh, not dry looking you know, made a little sheen to it right um yeah so uh and uh, there's some there's some some good contents here, that's for sure. All right, and then Kimberly, uh, being uh, the only woman judge today, uh, what does a woman look for in a nice beard? I look for hydration. It hydration. Definitely hydrated and the smell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. All right, well, you know, with these judges, they're going to evaluate our three contestants, and when we return, we're going to reveal who is the winner for round three of Beef Spirit Envy, brought to you by Rustic's Barber Shop. Coming up next, the Beef Vegan Presents, so don't go away. And clear. All right. So that's what they're going to do right now. So I'm going to leave you guys to be able to uh, evaluate all three. Uh, and then based off that, uh, if you could each individually uh, let me know who your winner is, I will put that on the points and then we should have uh, a full blown winner by the end of this. Right. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, for the, everyone else on the stream, I'm going to play you a clip here from uh, yesterday talking about Sydney Sweeney and her getting un- unnecessary flack, to be honest with you. Song, you know, this is 100% AI. In fact, actually, with this, uh, I say 100% AI, uh, it's not AI as far as the vocals are concerned. Rico and I are going to perform this live for you on the air. Real humans. Yes. The difference is uh, previously we would find beats on YouTube uh, by producers out there, unsigned producers, and utilize those you, with uh, lyrics that were generated through AI. And then what happened for us Eve? to perform? Well, then AI got so advanced that now we're <laughs> able to make beats. Uh, originally through AI. So we don't need you, Timberland. Get out of here. Exactly. So the instrumental is AI, and then technically we own it now. Of course, Five Finger Death Punch, who has a new album out with the late DMX, uh, which we are featuring their new song uh, in single on this station. It's played on incoming, and I'm sure you'll hear it throughout the day. Uh, But they have a full album with DMX, which I'm kind of intrigued. I want to hear the whole thing, see what it sounds like. And See if I recognize any like former lyrics. Like if this is all new stuff from DMX, is it AI DMX? Like what is the deal and what compelled them to do this? But uh, you know, uh, DMX lives on through the music of Five Finger Death Punch. That's a sentence I didn't think I'd be saying this year. Oh, fascinating. I know. I, uh, you know, I have a bunch of celebrity crushes, right? Mari, you've known me for a long time. Have you ever heard me kind of geek out and, and crush on Lily Allen? I have not, but I see it. 
Yeah, you see it. Lily Allen's a hundred percent my type in every single way, and I've always she's kind of like an indie. Uh, she was erratic uh, when she was younger. She was a little nutty. Yeah. Uh, she, but she's cute as hell, and she's unfortunately she's been dating uh, David Harbor of Stranger Things and and other things, and apparently things are going good. I thought they married. broke up. Are they married? Mm -hmm. <sighs> There's another one gone, but <laughs> either way, uh, something uh, was real interesting in a recent interview that she had. She said that she, when she started de dating David Harbor, uh, that she actually Googled how long she should wait before having sex with him. Huh? Yeah, which is odd. I mean, uh, Lily Allen was kind of a free spirit and definitely no virgin. So, uh, but she wanted to make sure that this relationship would last. So she needed outside advice. And since she didn't have like, a, I don't know, like an, a sex expert to talk to, she went to Google to get this information. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, like, will this work? Uh, will Google give us these answers to help us be better at dating? So I had Mari Google some questions, right? First and foremost, I asked you to Google how many dates you should wait to have sex. What did Google tell you? What do you think? Well, I know that the standard or the cliche would be three dates, right? That was yeah. in kind of like an old school kind of uh, unwritten rule. Right. Right. The third date is the get lucky date. Uh, some people still live by that rule. Yep, but that most, was on Reddit. Oh, yeah. Most people in 2024 do not. Um, so what we what does Google say? So Google says eight to nine dates. Eight to nine dates. Eight to nine dates. I don't dates. think Lily Allen made him wait eight to nine dates, but maybe she did because he did put a ring on it. Yep. Eight to nine dates. That's a lot of dates. That's a big investment. That's like, yeah, eight months, maybe if you go out once a month. Well, no, I mean, in fact, <laughs> actually, if it's eight to nine dates and you're dating if as a man, if a woman tells me she waits eight to nine dates and we are hitting it off and we have chemistry, I'm booking lunch dates. I'm booking, <laughs> you know, doubling up, tripling up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, you know, Saturday night dates, Sunday picnic <laughs> dates, you know, I could bang out eight dates in eight days, to be honest with you. Uh. But. I guess that's my problem. Uh, what are some other dating advice questions you ask Google? All right. So um, who should always pay for the date? Okay. okay. Stereotypically, they say men should always pay for the date, right? That checks out. Google says yes. Guys, Google still always. says that. Mm -hmm. Sexist as hell, man. <laughs> I don't know. In 2024, I thought we're all on the same page. Okay. Uh, all and right. who should or should you kiss on the first date? Oh, this is an interesting one. Now, Google is being so far coming off kind of prude and sexist, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. All right, uh, so do I think Google says you should kiss on the first date? I personally believe that if you feel like there's a spark there, you should definitely see if there's chemistry in your kiss. The kiss tells you a lot it does. in any kind of relationship. So I would say, yes, you kiss on the first date. What does Google say? Ding, ding, ding. Experts reckon yes. Okay, nice, mm -hmm. nice. So, I mean, everybody going into a first date, then you have to uh, have some breath mints or gum and be ready because the first date is a must a must but sex is not mm -hmm. and you have to wait maybe potentially eight dates but what should a guy wear on the first date okay that's what you asked Ooh, yeah this one's interesting oh yeah it sucks for me though man because i'm mr backwards hat guy if i'm <laughs> going to a fancy restaurant i wore my hat forwards still a hat though still a hat. i'm a hat fish you <laughs> um mm. Uh, so what should you wear i have no clue okay what does google recommend a collared shirt Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing they recommended was a collared shirt. But the weirdest thing I thought was what they suggested for the best place to take a lady on a first date. Oh, yeah. What's that? Um, okay. So there's a few, but it was Art Gallery Museum. Okay. Picnic. Okay. Bowling. All right. Outdoor market. Yep. Amusement park. Okay. Yeah. You think so? Hiking. I've done okay. for so far, I've checked off every single one of these as a first date. And now I'm like a serial dater for sure. Right. Uh, so kind of an expert on this, but yeah. there has not been one that they've listed that I've not literally done a first date on hiking. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to get back on here in just about uh, so, so five, ten seconds. Uh, the judges are going to deliberate. Well, they actually uh, they went through and uh, evaluated all three contestants. They're going to tell us uh, who they chose and why here on the air. So let's get right into it. As always, thank you guys for watching the podcast broadcast. It's Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to Be Vegan Presents. It is now time 
uh, to figure out who the judges decided will, has the best beard in Tucson. And then added to the points that we have from establishing our stunts earlier this morning, we're going to be able to have a definitive winner for the best beard in Tucson brought to you by Rustic's Barbershop located inside the Tucson Mall. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Kimberly on this one. Kimberly, who did you believe had the best beard and why? So what I was looking for was hydration. Yes. Um, and I did get to touch all of them. Yeah, you so, touched them really well, too. Yeah, yes. I to touch them. Um, so my vote is going to go to Taco. Taco. All right. So contestant number three, Taco. All right. Julio, who is a barber at Rustic's Barber Shop. And you could uh, check out his portfolio and book appointments with him at rustics.com. Julio, who did you choose and why? Well, they all have nice beards, but I'm going to go with Taco. Yeah, you're going with Taco again. Yeah, just because it's, it's full. It, it, it is pretty full, and it's wide. It's actually wider than his actual face and head. Yeah. Like, his beard has the width that is, like, wider than his actual head. Which Would you recommend that as far as a stylist, Julio? Um, no, I mean, Manny has a good beard, too. It just depend, it depends on uh, their face structure. But Taco has, like, we're going based on the thickness and yeah. hydration. I'm going to go with Taco. Yeah, Taco came prepared today, for sure. He's, uh, in fact, actually, I feel like he went through beard training. He went through beard camp. Uh, had put all the chemicals in his beard. Probably, like, blue dry it. Did you blue dry Did you blow dry your hair this morning? Your beard? Yeah. You, blew, you blew dry your hair, your beard. And uses the beard butter from uh, Rustics, which obviously is going to give him a leg up in the competition. Nice. All right, uh, let's see, Marty. Uh, who do you think had the best beard and why? Well, they all they all do. They have spectacular beards. They really do. They, you know, they're uh, they're they're groomed well and they're, they're maintained. Uh, but I'm going to go with Manny. But Manny's got a lot of hydration. I can see it from here. Nice sheen in his beard. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but y'all got awesome, awesome beards for sure. Yeah, all right. So, uh, man, Manny did get a uh, judge's consideration, so that's a point for Manny. Uh, and as we tally this all up, it's it's pretty clear. Uh, now, unfortunately, Phil, you are our second runner-up, uh, but, you know, congratulations on the five-year birthday coming up on your beard. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> for the sixth year, you know, uh, that will be the winning year as the beard continues to grow and develop. Uh, coming in as the bridesmaid, uh, second, uh, first runner-up for the third time in a row, OG streamer hey, Manny. Manny. Oh, <laughs> Number two, meaning that our winner for the third round of Beast Beard Envy brought to you by Rustic's Barbershop, the one, the only Taco. Congratulations, Taco. <laughs> Fantastic beard. And I feel like your beard has evolved and gotten better since we started working with Rustic's and Rustic's Barbershop. And he's like, get real close. Any closing words and thank yous you want to throw out there, Taco, to anybody who uh, supported your beard growth? <laughs> Yeah, I want to thank this guy right here. He actually uh, lined me up and made it, uh, you know, really nice. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So you're a customer of Julio as well. So it's an yeah. inside job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> inside job. The conspiracy against Manny winning this contest continues to grow. Um, hey, I told you I came to win. Yeah. 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 I mean, in all fairness and in reality too, when you walk in this uh, building today, <laughs> yeah, but it was like a different man. You're like, oh my God, Taco. Yeah, you're looking yeah. good. So like manscaping, go to Rustics and stuff. And this was like uh, literally before and after of Taco. I'll have to pull up an image from the last time he did the competition and how he is now. This guy looks like goddamn Bachelor on ABC. <laughs> uh, so congratulations. Weirdo, I love you. Have fun in this yeah. next tenure. And we look forward to having you back as a guest anytime you want kimberly thank you so much tim thank you for uh of course uh producing and sponsoring the event julio marty thanks for coming in you guys thanks for listening when drive safe pride safe and as always rock on on the the Woo. So we'll come and uh, that's all the time we have on the stream of course we're right now time as you i will knock out all your teeth